Hello everybody and welcome to Project Trade. This is the Technical Indicators Show. And in this video we're talking about the Money Flow Index, aka the MFI, aka Muff Index, aka Little Flow. It does go by many, many names. The indicator was created by Gene Kwong and Avram Sudak in 1989. It's a momentum-based oscillator with a fixed value range between a minimum value of 0 and a maximum value of 100. Another frequently used nickname for the indicator is the volume based RSI. In fact, that name was coined by the creators of the indicator themselves who felt the relative strength indicator needed a volume aspect to it to be able to increase its accuracy and overall usefulness as a technical indicator. What came to be from that was the money flow index. As the money flow index is modeled after the RSI, it will be no surprise that it is traditionally used as a reversal indicator. The MFI tries to figure out whether the momentum of price is too overstretched in either direction. If price is too overstretched according to the MFI, that is to suggest that price will reverse, retrace, or at the very least stall. That doesn't always work out with reversal indicators though, sometimes that trend does just keep on going and going. Got to keep an eye out for the overarching macro on the situation, but let's get to the form of the MFI and we can see how it tries to find the reversal of those trends. There it is, so the MFI reading is calculated by dividing 100 by 1 plus the money ratio. Then you just subtract that figure from 100 which is putting it within the range bound values. Okay then, all understood. Except wait, what is that money ratio part? That's not very clear actually. Fair enough, so step one for getting your money ratio, calculate the price for each period as the typical price. That is the high plus the low plus the close of price divided by 3. Once we've got the typical price we can calculate the raw money Money flow. That is calculated by taking the typical price for each period and multiplying it by the volume for the period. That's relatively simple, but do be aware that the raw money flow is split into positive money flow and negative money flow. If the price increased from the previous period, then the raw money flow is calculated as positive money flow. And when price decreased, it is calculated as negative money flow. The only other possibility, of course, is that price stayed the same between two periods. In that case, that period can simply be be ignored and you can move on to the next period. By default the period input for the MFI is 14. So the individual values from all of the positive money flow periods from the last 14 periods are added together and all of the individual values from all of the negative money flow periods they are added together as well. So then to finally get our money ratio figure we can divide that positive money flow figure by the negative money flow figure. That brings us full circle all the way back to our original formula. So we can now plug the money ratio value into our formula and we are good to go. That is how it's all calculated and if you are familiar with the RSI formula then you'll likely notice the similarities in how the periods are counted together when their price increased or counted together when their price decreased. The money ratio aspect of our formula just replaces the relative strength aspect of the RSI formula. Hence both indicators use the 0 to 100 scale in their oscillating reading. Incorporation of volume just adds that extra kick to the MFI if you want the extra kick. That's what the MFI oscillator looks like at the bottom of the screen, that's where you'll find it beneath the price, and you can see there's a general rule when price is decreasing, so is the MFI value. And when price is increasing, uh, the MFI broadly mirrors that too. As well as the option to change the input of periods for the oscillator to look back at, there's also the option to change the volume type from tick volume to real volume. For that to work though, you will need access to the real volume data, and as of yet, through the brokers that I use, I have been un able to get that data. Never mind, maybe one day. Something that is very close to being guaranteed to work though, you can change the style of the line. Have it thicker, narrower, dotted, dashed, get creative with it. Trading is as much an art as it is a science. There are many, many colors available if you don't like blue or green or red or any color in particular. There must be some color in the mix that you enjoy. If you hate every color in there, I don't really know what to make of that. No suggestions for you. You'll just have to learn to live with some particular color I suppose. You can also see that the MFI oscillator has a grey line marked out at the 20 level. There is another one at 80 just above the oscillator's reading. We can't see but it is there. These are the default levels from Kwong and Sudak for determining whether price is overbought, oversold or neither. Here are four different MFI oscillators with a variety of levels marked out on each of them. The top one of those four, those are the default levels for the MFI at 80 and 20. A reading above 80 can of course be considered overbought any reading under 20 can be considered oversold. You're free to set your levels however you like though. Just because it's the default conventional wisdom does 
not mean that it's the correct wisdom. On the second MFI down, the levels are further to the extremes out at 90 and 10. Not going to get as many signals with those levels. The one beneath that has them pretty generously at 70 and 30. And the one at the bottom just has one line on it set at a value of 41. They really can be however you please, whatever you find works best for you. In a 2020 study by Marek and Kadkova on attempting to optimize the settings of the money flow index, they found that the default settings absolutely could be improved upon with different levels and input look back length. However, they also found that the perfect settings for the MFI, those are going to vary depending on the particular asset that's being traded. I'll link a PDF of that study in the video description if you are interested in the methodology and full results of it. That leads us nicely into our entry signals. How can the money flow index help us get into more reliable trades? As we said, it's mostly reversal signals that we're in for with the MFI. At least that's how it's designed by the view of the old guard over 30 years by now. So the basic idea is to enter a sell trade when the value of the MFI is 80 or above as price can be considered overbought at that point or get into a buy trade when the MFI reading is 20 or below as in those circumstances it must be oversold. Even at that point though there's still a few options of when exactly you could enter. That could be the first period that the MFI goes into the overbought or oversold territory. It could be that you're waiting for the MFI to spend X amount of periods in the overbought or oversold territory before you enter or it could be that you enter when the MFI is actually leaving the overbought or oversold regions. These methods could all be seen as reasonable within the greater context of the overall strategy. Remember the MFI doesn't have to be your lead indicator either. You could just use it as a filter for other reversal indicators. So let's say you're using a reversal candle as your direct entry signal. You might say that that reversal candle entry is only valid if the MFI is above 80 or below 20. Maybe after the MFI suggests that price is overbought or oversold you wait for the RSI to give you your direct entry signal. The point is that there are a lot of reversal tools out there that can be used in conjunction with the MFI to try and get greater confluence over those reversal trade entries. It doesn't have to be used for just reversal trade entries either. If you are getting desperate you can always throw the MFI onto your price chart to assist you with some trend hunting entries. You could set a mid-level point at a value of 50 where you enter a buy trade for the MFI crossing above 50 or enter a sell trade for the MFI crossing below 50 or try for a bit of extra confirmation and use levels of 60 and 40 where you buy above 60 sell below 40 not too much wizardry going on with these signals or again use one of those options as a filter for your other almost certainly better trend based indicators for example when the MFI is above 50 then you're only going to take buy signals from your other trend indicators and when it's below 50 it will just be the sell trades from those indicators so that's a bit of diversity in use for the indicator though and as a technical indicator myself I do have to say I do not enjoy being pigeonholed as only to be used in reversal this or trend that try me anywhere things do not stop for us there though there are more signals to come we are going to jump back onto reversal style entries this time we're looking for the ever powerful divergence for the uninitiated divergence is when price goes one way but the oscillator goes the other this can be split into bullish and bearish divergence so when price goes down between two peaks but the money flow index goes up between those same two peaks that is a sign of bullish divergence time to buy for the bulls bearish divergence that is the opposite price goes up between two peaks but over that same length of time the MFI goes down conventional wisdom says that in those circumstances you sell off the market that is some sweet bearish divergence here's an example of a bullish divergence on a very real price chart this is our first peak or more of a trough when it's down there I suppose it goes just into the oversold region on the MFI then with our second trough we can see that the MFI has pulled out of the oversold region and is now giving a higher value reading that upward trajectory is highlighted on our price chart between those two arrows and so we can draw a corresponding set of arrows demonstrating that price has continued on a downward trend during that same time frame those two sets of arrows they are encroaching toward one another as time goes on essentially you can look for those two lines making a wedge pattern it is suggesting that price has overextended itself to the sell side so therefore you should take yourself a buy trade works out pretty well this time and i'm sure we're 
you're able to take some profits. Now for an example demonstrating a bearish divergence from the MFI. Our first peak on the MFI is where that yellow ring is and our second peak way over here on the right hand side. Clearly the first MFI reading is in the overbought region and the second one is not so we know that the value of the MFI is coming down. In case it is a bit unclear there you see the arrows between the two are downward it slopes. However on the chart price has stretched into brand new highs that is going the opposite way. So for the bearish divergence we can see that we get a reverse wedge pattern. This time the two sets of arrows are widening. Generally speaking the wider the wedge the stronger the divergence signal and although we can't see exactly what happens with price I do believe we have that yep here it is here's the price chart after we enter into that sell trade from the bearish divergence price keeps on dropping. I can only imagine that we are able to take profit right down here at the very bottom of the chart. I mean maybe not at the exact bottom but certainly it would be no more than say one or two pipettes from the absolute low in price. Pro trader moves that's divergence. Now let's move on to money management and whether the money flow index can help to try and protect our capital. To start us off if it's those reversal trades that you're after you could exit the trade at a fixed predetermined level. So say you enter a sell trade when the MFI reading moves above 80 you could set your rule that once the MFI value comes down below 65 that's when you're going to exit the trade. If you're buying the market underneath an MFI value of say 10 you could leave the trade when it returns to a value of 25. It's probably not the best but it could have a spot within a snappy reversal system. Maybe you're not trading a reversal strategy maybe instead you are trading a trend based strategy in which case you could exit the trade when the MFI becomes overbought or oversold. So if you are in a buy trade at any point and the MFI moves above 80 you'd exit the trade as price is overbought and vice versa for a sell trade you're enjoying that trending environment getting a good move out of it suddenly the MFI moves below 20 and that's your signal to get out of the market close down your trade. The presumption of course is that the momentum of your trade has finally exhausted itself. Good stuff that's the money managed. When you're in the markets do feel free to use the indicator on any asset that is available to you. Whichever market that you're trading on the MFI it will have a value to give you as long as the trading platform that you're on actually offers the indicator to you of course. If not then you better bust out the calculator buster. Something that is worth mentioning though as the relative strength index indicator was built on stocks and the MFI indicator is built on the RSI indicator it would make sense that broadly speaking the MFI is going to be more effective on stocks too. As we said though the MFI it will take a shot at anything. Also using a higher time frame is probably going to be a more consistent more reliable approach to the indicator. Think about being on the five minute time frame in a strong trending move one way or the other. There isn't really much of a chance for traders to stop and think about their moves they can often keep piling on as emotions start getting involved whereas with something like the daily time frame where there's 24 hours crammed into a candle people go to sleep for a night they eat they come back in the morning and they're more likely to think hey maybe we overdid it yesterday let's pedal back a bit the other way today that's usually what you're after with the money flow index it is an untested presumptive point based on my outlook of human psychology but a lot of traders do generally see the daily time frame as the strongest and most reliable time frame even if their strategy works on other time frames as well. Even on the highest of time frames though naturally the MFI can still end up being wrong wrong wrong. Constantly trading reversal entries using the money flow index sooner or later it will lead you into the dreaded forever ongoing trend. Check out this chart right here we've got a default overbought level set at a value of 80 and our MFI is looking back at the standard 14 periods which means we get an overbought reading here okay that doesn't amount to much there's a bit of a drop a few periods on maybe you make some very small profits on that one I doubt it but it's obviously a possibility but then check this next one where the MFI goes above 80 and over the next few periods price didn't care it just continued to skyrocket up up and away there is nothing but losses if you stuck it out on that one telling yourself every other period that the reverse has got to come sooner or later it's got to be your ship has sailed and your account balance has sunk beware the ongoing trend in the realm of similar indicators we've mentioned a few times as you know by now it's the indicator that the MFI is based off of it's the relative strength index the RSI so of course it's the same deal with the RSI it is going after those overbought or oversold signals but instead of levels at 80 and 20 the relative strength index puts its default levels at 70 and 30 sell above 70 buy below 30 all of the benefits and the pitfalls coming from the MFI they apply near equally to the RSI that is if you do like the reverse trades 
a bit and not quite feeling the MFI, give the relative strength index a go, why not? Might be a winner for you. And if you're not about the relative strength index, there are a few other options for reversal indicators in the form of an oscillator. You've got the stochastic oscillator, the Williams percent range, the commodity channel index. There's a good bunch of them that are out there. They're all trying to do pretty similar things to one another. They're all trying to find those overbought and oversold areas of price momentum. None of those indicators are actually using volume in their calculations though. It is simply not incorporated into their formula as it is with the money flow index. That is something that proponents of the M MFI would argue makes it a stronger choice than those other indicators mentioned. If you are looking for other indicators which combine volume and price together, a couple of examples, you've got the on balance volume indicator, the accumulation distribution indicator. Although these ones aren't necessarily trying to find the overbought or oversold signals as the MFI does, they are a study on the momentum of price whilst also taking into account the volume behind that momentum. Useful to use as an extra check on the validity of a price move. And there are many other indicators that do have overlapping traits with the money flow index. If you dig deep enough, you will find an indicator for pretty much anything you could think of. In conclusion, the money flow index, it is a pretty strong reversal indicator. If you do enjoy trading off of overbought and oversold signals, this is for sure an indicator to take note of. As we saw though, we don't have to pigeonhole the indicator as being all about reversals. It can be used in trend-based strategies or as part of your money management. It might just be a minuscule part of your overall grand stratagem, or maybe it's the focus point on the mantelpiece. It is going to try its best in any given situation, but like almost every indicator on the planet, it is unlikely to ever get you to profitability using nothing other than a single signal over and over again without any regard to any other information. It is going to need to be used in conjunction with other trading concepts and indicators, irregardless of what strategy you're after. It's the nature of the beast really. That is everything for the money flow index, but if you do want more information on the indicator, then you'll be able to find some of that no problemo just take a look in the video description and never ever 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 forget that every single chart we show you has been completely pre-selected they are not in fact arbitrary price charts where examples are plentiful we do sometimes have to go pretty deep into the charts to be able to find examples as good as the ones we present it's not always going to work out as it does in those examples but fortunately we have traded the money flow index in live forward testing and we'll also link those videos in the description thank you for watching this is project trade i am genghis khan's horse and there will be more.